to założyć na łóżcie? Nie. Nie, a na czytanie? Znaczy nie. Czy mam tutaj polskie tłumaczenie, czy hiszpańskie tłumaczenie? Który kanał? Który Możecie sobie założyć słuchawki. Mm -hmm. Myślę, że to będzie tam. Za chwilę. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon uh, and welcome to the press conference of the film Platz Sabav Playground. A film in the official section of the 64th edition of the San Sebastian Film Festival. And in order to talk about this film, we have with us Bartos Kowalski, the director, the actors uh, Shimon Maliski, Nicola Shigoda, and Michalina Svitstun, the director of photography Mateo Silsalski, and the producers Mireya Sarakiewicz and Felix Pastusiak. Excuse my pronunciation of the Polish surnames, I hope they were okay. So I suppose. There are questions already. Yes, uh, it seems that there's a question in the second row. Uh, let's start here, please. Well, uh, hi. I'd like to ask the director whether what do you think of the reaction of the audience? Because a lot of people left uh, the film theater um, uh, before the end of the film, and to the children, actors. Um, how did you react when you knew what the plot of the film was going to be about and what did you think? And it seemed to see in the room, someone sc screams at the end, uh, someone said, sadistic, what a sadistic film. Okay. Well, what, what did I think about um, the, the reaction uh, of the audience uh, at the end? I mean, from the very beginning, the, uh, the intention for the final scene was uh, to sh not to show clean violence that we're all used to in movies. Uh, the intention was to to make it unbearable, as it would be, as it is, mirrored in uh, in real life. You know, so um, if I had to witness such an act uh, in real life, it would be unbearable for me. So some people stood up and left. I mean, it's. Uh, I, I figure it's a. It's an emotional reaction that is, uh, that is fine with me because our intention was to be as realistic as possible, um, and it is terrifying knowing that things like that do happen uh, around the corner and characters portrayed in the film uh, share this world with us, whether we like it or not. Excuse me. Uh, 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 you asked uh, the, 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 yes, the, 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 okay. Puedes repetir la pregunta? Para, eh, sí, a ver. Odpowiadać na pytanie. Ja też nie mam. Oh, the, the question, the, the question, the question. The question for the kids was, um, wh how, d how did they feel when they were going to shoot a film, um, knowing what was going to happen in it? What, what did you feel like? Can you hear? What, 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 the, what did it feel like for them, the, the, ki the children actors, to shoot the film to shoot the film, to shoot, when they knew what the film was going to be about, how did they feel? Well, initially, I was afraid. Uh, 
I thought it was just a scene. I thought about it just a scene in a film that we shouldn't be afraid of it because we nearly we never really hurt anybody. So that's the way I thought about it. Bueno, es una escena en una película y no hemos hemos hecho daño, no hemos eh, herido a nadie. Eh, esto, esta es la situación más o menos con Shanek. Odebrałem to tak, no bo. It seems to me, as there were a lot of people, some people weren't able to put up with it, uh, but they, a lot of them stayed behind. So. No hace falta. No hace falta. Um. Bueno. Found out what the film is going to be about, and not about the audience reaction leaving no, the theater. I've that, heard. that was your question, right? Really? I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I've, I've, I've heard. Ja about wam the jak się, jak wam powiedziałem i dowiedzieliście się, Przemek, zdejmij słuchawki. Jak się dowiedzieliście, o czym będzie film, że końcówka filmu będzie taka drastyczna, zanim zaczęliśmy zdjęcia, co poczuliście, co pomyśleliście? Yeah, what was the film and how it was going to finish? What was your reaction when you read the script and when you knew what was going to happen? And what did you feel at that time when you had to shoot that scene? That was, the, this is the first film that I've made, so therefore I thought it was very interesting to see how a film is made uh, when uh, films with drastic scenes and how they're shot from the inside, but that's all that concerned me. I don't know, I couldn't tell you. How did you feel when you found out what the film was all about? I felt okay. I was happy because I thought it, it was a new adventure in my life and I thought that it would be okay to, uh, to play, uh, act in a film and I like to watch films and in general I was very interested in how films are made. about the reaction of the audience, but about is this what you consider the future of the youth of the world, or is this the youth of Poland? And is it not slowly but surely destroying the souls of children? This is, it, I, I, this doesn't make sense. To ever, there is no connection between the parents, between the teachers, between even the children. It is, it is rotten from the beginning to the end. And it's very, very sad and disturbing. Um, do I consider this um, the future? I mean, well, you know, when I was, um, when I came across the story that inspired the film, uh, it, it shocked me and it devastated me so much that I started digging deeper into the subject of, uh, um, of child and teenage violence and psychopathology and I've met uh, police uh, psychologists while writing the script and and uh, and I've learned that it was not like a very sole uh, case of, of violence that things like that do happen not all of them make the news but that things like that do happen um, we just don't really get to know about all of those things, but one of the police officers that uh, that I spoke to um, just three days before we met, she uh, she described a case that she was on when uh, when uh, a girl was trying to uh, 
to shove a toothbrush down her little sister's uh, throat. Uh, and she didn't really know why, you know, she just, uh, she just got angry. And if you're living in a, you know, normal, safe bubble, I might say, you know, you, you, don't, you don't get to hear things like that. But, I mean, whether you like it or not, uh, I mean, people like that do share the world. It's not a generalization of teenagers of the world. It's some sort of a portrait through some kind of a pathology, a social pathology, of course. But things like that do happen. I'm afraid through you now we get it all condensed in one film. And, uh, I'm afraid. Anyway, I have nothing more to say. Okay, okay thank, thanks. Thank you. Tenemos allí otra. Another question? Hi, good afternoon. Congratulations, first of all, for the film, to the entire group especially. I would like to congratulate the three children, actors. Their work has been an excellent piece of work. And the director also. What I would like to ask the director is when the kids decide to take that little child from the shopping mall, as of that moment, you decide to film from a distance. Why did, to so to speak, why did you decide to do it that way? And also, I would like to know how you did you shoot that last sequence? That last sequence, because it's very harsh, it's very, it's very brutal. And finally, the film. You can also see a very tough sequence, one of the toughest sequences that I've ever seen in films in the last few years in the film festival. Um, I would like to know how you prepared that sequence with these young actors. Thank you and thank you very much. Thank you. You know, in terms of the last uh, part of the film, it was, it, it was kind of obvious for me to shoot this very last scene from a distance. Uh, because I think going into any kind of close-ups would be just pornographic and, 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 and also cliched uh, in terms of cinema. And uh, then on the other hand, like framing trees and having all the scene happening outside of frame, that, that wasn't the idea for like witnessing the horror uh, that took place. So when when the idea was born to to have this scene from really really far away the distance between the camera and the, and the characters had to be somehow set up you know so so the last the sixth part of the film um when we start off with the um, with the little kid looking into the camera kind of saying goodbye and then we have the um the um, the POV cameras of the um, how do you call that the the the, the cameras in the CCTV uh, in the shopping mall right after that just as you said the camera um, distances and starts that doesn't follow the characters anymore it just um, stays um, stays this distant to set up the distance for um, for the last scene. Also, you know the the spark for the for the for, for the f whole film for me was uh, the unexplainable, you know, and I I just kept myself asking the question why and and when I learned that there was no explanation to this specific case that inspired the film, mm, I didn't dare to speculate, you know, at that very moment when the abduction happens, I mean, it was intentional not to see the abduction itself, you know, I didn't want to go in uh, speculating what the kids would say to the little one, I just intentionally wanted to, to take it out and just leave it as, as it is in real life in this specific case that we just really don't know what the hell happened there and we'll never find out. Because there was a lot of speculations, since from video games to like brutal films. I think at, at this specific uh, topic, they were talking about child's play movie. But it's like you know, not everybody who watches a horror film goes out and commits a crime. You know, so there are clues and hints that might have a meaning.
but at the same time they really don't have to. So, um, so yeah, so that's like the two reasons behind distancing um, structure-wise in the, in the last part of the film. And then uh, your second question, I think, was uh, how we shot the, the very last scene. It was, um, it was a, actually a pretty boring process because um, it took a long time and it was a mix of uh, real actors and, uh, and, and fake dummy, of course, and blue screen and CGI. Uh, and and uh, the, the kids had their marks and they had to repeat the, the very same moves. Uh, like three times, and of course there is no cut in the film, but we didn't shoot it in one go. It's uh, it was combined in in, uh, in post production, but the idea from the beginning was not to have a cut in order for it to be like almost pseudo documentary style um, real. Uh, then uh, on the other hand, the scene in the ruins. Uh, was like a complete opposite. There was um, we we've talked about the, the the scene. We didn't rehearse it at all. The kids knew um, the beats they had to follow at certain points. Like uh, this is when where, where, where you sort of snatch the wallet. This is this. This is when you start crying, uh, etc. Um, and we did uh, one take. It was a one take deal on each of the kids. And that was uh, and that was it. So it was like a complete opposite of the last scene. There was just like a red mark here, blue screen here, and it took a long time. And it was really pre-planned. I was on the radio the whole time, guiding the kids. All the dialogue was recorded in post-production. Um, I think that covers your questions. Yeah. Con los actores, ¿no? Sí, trabaja, sí. How you prepared with the actors? How 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 did you how did you prepare for those uh, very difficult scenes? This this is for the kids. Okay, how did you prepare yourselves for those for those very difficult scenes? And how did you prepare your roles? <laughs> Well, we got prepared talking to the rest of the the crew in the film. They told us how we should do it. We also talked with psychologists, and and that and that made us much more relaxed. And that's how we prepared to do to uh, to portray our roles. We talked to the psychologist who was always uh, present with us. So this is how we prepared. Uh, um, Michalina, como ha dicho, hemos hablado con psicólogos y hemos hablado con el director y el productor y hablamos mucho sobre. Uh, on the film, we, we talked a lot about the film, and as we know that the film was shot uh, in different scenes. Uh, I mean, we discussed each of the scenes, and each scene was presented itself to us as, uh, uh, as a scene in the film, not a reality, of course. Mm. Vale, vale, okay. It's not necessarily a translation in English. The headphones. Thank you. Sure. There is there is Polish translation and English translation. Okay, just in case you wanted to know. Okay, thank you. Okay, the truth is that before each scene, we were. We spoke to the director. We saw. We 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 talked about how the scene was going to be. The director would tell us how we had to perform. Uh, and, but sometimes we improvised and we tried to do our work the best in the best possible way. Okay. And follow along the lines of your question. I would like to talk. How how do we got Mateos, who's the DOP of the film? 
perhaps you could explain how was the uh, photography and how was that process? How did you work with Bart with uh, Bartos? Uh, um, the way we, we wanted to shoot it was to leave as a uh, little footprint of the crew and the camera department, uh, to leave as much uh, space for the kids to, to, uh, to work. So I, I handheld all the shots myself and uh, we had as little crew as possible. Uh, also we used minimal, minimum lights. Uh, which was like uh, three really small LED units, um, just uh, not to get in the way of, of the performance of the kids. Uh, and uh, the performance was uh, always on the first, uh, was always the most important thing in the movie. Uh, and all the technical stuff had to be as quick as, as uh, uh, as quick as possible, as uh, fast and uh, undisturbing for them to 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 work. And uh, from the beginning, we we were talking with Bartosz that uh, the style of the cinematography should be documentary. Uh, we have a lot of experience in that. We we shot two documentaries with Bartosz already. Um, so we really wanted to make the movie real and uh, I don't know how to say believable. Um, so the audience really gets into the uh, gets into the story and believes it from the first frame to the last, especially the last. Um, so that's 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 it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. See, sí, uh... there's another question. In the second row, yes. Hi, I would like to know about the duration of each, uh, when the kids are introduced to school in the past, in the last part, that is whether all of those chapters are made and are measured perfectly well, was that, was that written in the script? Was that determined beforehand or not? It was pretty much all written in the script. There was a, uh, there was pretty much one editing change, uh, structure-wise. But from the from the get-go, it was uh, divided the way it is. That it starts off with Gabrisha, uh, and this part is the shortest, then goes into Shimek, Charek, school ruins, and playground as it is. So, uh, so yeah, that's how that's how it was written from the get-go. And there's a question in the front row, please. Hi. I, a question for the director. I would like you to tell us, tell me, there's a scene in the film which I thought was a key scene, which is this slow-mo where the slow-mo camera where many men and women are looking at the kids. Uh, stop and start, stare at the kids. I think that's the most important scene in the film. And I would like you to explain why you decided to place it where you placed it and, and what meaning do you give to that scene and the meaning of that, 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 that that scene gives confers to the rest of the film, okay? Well, um, well the intention was to kind of have a, a flash forward that the kids, of course, the scene doesn't really match the rest of the film. It's kind of, it's kind of surreal. But the intention was to have some, some sort of a flash forward of a, a symbol of the society staring, judging, uh, and being passive, not reacting, mm, not reacting to what the kids will do in the later part of the film. So that was the intention. If it goes through, that's not up to me uh, to judge, but I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that you, that you pointed it out. Um, thank you. <laughs> but you say nevertheless, but the, the reaction is passive, but the gesture of the people is quite serious. And they're censoring them almost. Is that correct to a certain extent? Well, it seems to me. Uh, I think they're more like condemning them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Sí, tenemos aquí. 
Hello, yes, I have two questions, one to the director, because you mentioned the pathology, but I'm wondering, that you're showing the pathology, but I'm wondering, uh, do you think it's a wider problem, and if uh, the aggression among youngsters, well, does it arise nowadays? And also the question to the, to the actors, because uh, obviously the film is a fiction and has nothing to do with you, but I'm wondering, uh, do you feel around you the aggression? Do you feel uh, in your everyday life something? Obviously, once again, stressing, it's a fiction that has nothing to do with you. Do I feel the aggression rising nowadays? Uh, yes, I do. It's, I it's mean, a social problem. It's, uh, I mean, if you, if you look at the news, if you look at what's going on with the, across Europe, uh, with homophobia, racism, far-right governments taking over, at least in our part of Europe. Um, yeah, I, I, I do have a feeling that there, is, uh, that there is more of it than just a few years back. And the kiddos. Uh, yeah. Yes, I realize that there were scenes that were quite drastic, and I know that there is violence between children throughout the world, and I know that there are cases of violence within families, and and I feel sorry for those people who live in film with families that where there's violence and drugs and I'm glad that the film is just solely fictional. I think that those things happen perhaps quite a lot. Um, I'm not too sure whether if it, these things happen every day, but if we focus in a month, for example, quite a lot do occur. Nevertheless, I think those situations, uh, and there are a lot in the world perhaps, but for me, perhaps too many. The world is very large, but throughout the world and in every corner of the world, these kinds of things happen, and we, we know perhaps just only a little part or a third of what's really taking place throughout the world. That's it? Okay. Any further questions? We've got uh, time for one final question. Yes, please. Thank you. Well, so, if I got uh, the other question right, do you think that aggression is rising in society? And do you also want to, um, to emphasize in this movie that uh, there is a, an inner animal in like, any of uh, us, especially in the, at such a, such a young age when we don't know what's good, what's evil, and that it might just explode at any moment and that this society encourages it? Yeah, it's a, it's a, I think it's a great question because that's what I uh, kept asking myself uh, when I started digging into the subject, you know, and, uh, and I was getting a lot of questions uh, and not a lot of answers, you know, and um, is there an inner animal, uh, as, uh, as you said, in us? Um, I really don't know, you know, but that's kind of, that was kind of the spark for, for the film itself. Does evil exist, you know? Is it, is it actually possible to be a human being with absolutely no empathy? Uh, I don't really know the answer to to that question, you know, and uh, and out of me not knowing and and being terrified of it, uh, and terrified of the fact that it surrounds me, uh, that's what kind of triggered the film, you know. So so I don't really have an answer to your uh, to your question, to be honest. In, perhaps to finish, now as we've got the producers of the film, Felix and Mireya, could you please explain how 
how how you set up a project like this as I say I imagine on the, on a it, when you read the script it's not a film that a lot of people would think it's attractive and might it might feel like a very uncomfortable film how did you manage to to get the financing and, and to get it all together to and even Bartosz could probably answer this. How did all the financing go? Could the producers please say something about that because of the difficult subject it deals with? Well, we had met Bartosz in the previous uh, films that he'd shot and we, we made a documentary for HBO together and the project of the film Playground I f appeared in Film It and uh, initially it was thought of as a short film but we convinced Bartos to develop it into a feature film and that's how we created the film. It wasn't uh, that difficult to prepare the project nor uh, carry it out because we suppose that it would be possible to do it with very few means uh, that is say as a documentary uh, we it, the Polish Institute cinema uh, Institute help us helped us and we managed to close the budget quite easily so that's a, another problem that was more important and more difficult was to try to find the three kids to find the right uh, actors and when we started to uh, search there were very few children who wanted to play uh, these roles because they thought it would be very difficult and in general they thought In our environment, that it was going to be a very difficult cast. So the casting was probably the most difficult side of things. We went throughout the entire country and we were able to find these three uh, children actors. And from the outset, we took a, psycholo a psychologist. Psychologist came with us to assess the children from an emotional standpoint and also from the point of view of their ability and acting skills and the parents uh, of the children, everyone collaborated really, the parents, Bartos, Mateus, and we we basically set up a, like a family uh, and that's why we all felt very good uh, during the shoot and we were able to overcome the shooting of the film, the whole, let's say the whole shoot of the film, but we all understood that what we wanted to do and why I think the kids were a little nervous but uh, uh, at, at present, uh, uh, right now, but we, ha we had discussed with them the subject matter that we deal with in the film and they know quite well that the, those things happen in, in, in the world sometimes. Uh, and right around the corner from us and we don't know it, sometimes we know a child that's taking care of his father or is taking care of his brother and then it turns out that, that this marvelous Semek or, or Chadek do things that we can't even dr think of really, and we can't believe. And working with the kids, what we had to do was show them how a film is made. We had to show them that some things that appear very drastic on the screen are created in a very special way. We explained how it should be portrayed. It was almost uh, as a game we showed them how a hand is cut uh, uh, and the kids uh, played a hand is cut off, that is to say, on, in, in, on film, on screen, and and they they played with uh, makeup and and the stunt people and obviously we prepared them to make uh, to to for the most difficult to to, to be able to uh, act in the most difficult film and I think we we're really good friends now I think the kids continue to have 
a marvellous contact up until the present moment. I think they're very good. Yeah, can you confirm this? Um, that otherwise would have been impossible. Of course, all of this was directed by Bartos and And he was their best uh, working buddy, really. Um, and I think that the confidence and that he gained from the kids and their trust, and if it weren't for his way of treating them as, as partners, really, and starting, uh, we've got to tell the truth, we've got to Let's tell the truth about everything that we do, and we're aware of what we're doing, and we know that it's a job, but that it wouldn't be, the film wouldn't have been that real or realistic, shall we say. And I think that we've managed to do this, and I think well, we've managed to, for the, the film to be very realistic, because several people in the audience have left the film before it finished. And that demonstrates quite clearly that it looked quite uh, real. Well, the question was also for Bartos and Felix. Solamente quería recordar una pregunta anterior que generalmente una, cier una cierta realización una together with Bartos is that I mean this is a very typical mechanism whenever confronted with such such outrageous unthinkable uh, horrifying situation we always first thing we try our first line of defense is finding a r kind of rational explanation and very often and this is the fact not known to a wide public but as but it is well known to the professionals to the psychologists who deal with that subject is the fact that very often you can't find the rational explanation for what happened. Bartosz, hmm. maybe you can add the last thing or...? I, I don't really have anything to add. I mean, the question was about preparation and, and, and financing and... I, I don't know what's... Uh, well, Bartosz helped you himself because when he wrote the script together with his co-author, then they won the very prestigious script award yeah. in Poland. And then it was easy. What can I say? Yeah, I mean, we, we felt, uh, I mean, we wanted uh, to, to make a film that could potentially be important. We, of course, wanted to try to get some sort of a message across to kind of a to point out the uh, the social problem that at least in Poland it wasn't discussed enough um, so uh, so yeah like just like uh, Mirella said it uh, for the Polish Film Institute uh, it wasn't like such a long way to um, to back us up they uh, they trusted us and here we are bien pues thank you very much i'll be loving you always with the love that's true always